Now that we've seen what cylindrical coordinates are, let's put them to use. Let's start computing some things. Let's begin with a three-dimensional problem that has some rotational symmetry that has caused us difficulty in the past. Remember from chapter seven, where we tried and failed to compute the moment of inertia of a solid cone about a vertical axis, the Z axis, going through the apex of this cone. Wow, that triple integral was not pleasant. The limits of integration were just awful. But look at this. This is clearly set up for polar coordinates. I've got that x squared plus y squared all over the place. So if we do a conversion, then the integrand clearly converts to r squared times rho times the volume element r dz dr d theta in that order. The limits of integration are also not so bad. Doing integration with respect to z first, we go from z equals zero to z equals h times quantity one minus r over capital R. Remember, capital R is the radius of the base of the cone. Now the limits on r and theta are even nicer because it's a circular disk in the xy plane. r goes from zero to capital R, theta goes from zero to two pi. Wow, nice numerical limits. This is gonna be swell. Let's do this integral. So what would I do? First, I would integrate with respect to theta. That would give me a two pi. I would factor out a rho. That gives me two pi rho times the integral as r goes from zero to capital R of what? Integrating with respect to z, I get h times quantity one minus little r over big R, all of that times r cubed dr. Doing that integral gives me two pi rho h times the difference between those two terms. The first is the integral of r cubed dr from zero to capital R. That's capital R to the fourth over four. The second is the integral of R to the fourth over capital R. That is R to the fifth over five R. Now combining this together gives me a final answer of pi H rho capital R to the fourth all over 10. If we use the fact that the mass of this cone is pi R squared H over three times rho, then we can factor that into this answer to get a final result. The moment of inertia is three tenths m r squared, where m is the mass of this cone. That's a nice result, thanks to polar coordinates.